All right, Kadosh, good morning. I wanted to share with you a beautiful idea on this week's parasha that actually gives us a lot of chizuk, a lot of strengthening in our irat shamayim and how we act. It says in the parasha, Vahika asher karab al-machane vayaret ha-egil umcholot. So Moshe Rabbeinu comes closer to the camps. Remember that he's told by HaKadosh Baruch Hu to come off the mountain. And he sees the Egel Azahav and he sees the dancing. Moshe. So Moshe Rabbeinu gets very angry. And he throws it out of his hands. And he breaks the Luchot underneath the mountain. And once happened in the year 1999, and what happened was, is that in Israel, there was a lot of noise because they had to move a very big machinery for the electricity company. And it made a lot of noise because they wanted to do it on Shabbat. They said on Shabbat because obviously there's a lot of religious people, so there's less traffic. So on Shabbat, they wanted to come and they wanted to make this move. And they were going to move this entire piece of uh, you know, machinery and they had to move it from one place to another. It was going to be a long trip. It was very, and it made a lot of noise. Obviously, the Haredim, the religious people went against it. They said, do it during the weekday. Why are you going to be Michalel Shabbat? To make a long story short, they didn't, they didn't pay attention. They went and they did it on the Shabbat. But what was worse than that was, is that when they were going by, right, to, from the Kvish Yerushalayim to Tel Aviv, there were Jews that were not religious Jews secular Jews, that they come and they start accompanying it. And they started clapping and they started being all happy and they were enjoying. Rav Mordechai Nogir Shali comes and he started, he was saying with such a cave, with such a deep sorrow. He says, you should know that this clapping is even worse than the Chilul Shabbat in itself. Now, how do we understand that? How can we understand that the clapping is worse than the than the actual Chilul Shabbat. How does that make sense? But rather he explained very simple. He says to do with the actual Chilul Shabbat, we could have not really justified it, but there could be, listen, at the end of the day, they need electricity. They had to do it. They weren't able to do it on a regular day. Maybe it would have been more dangerous. But you could try to answer it up. But the fact that they're going to come and they're going to be plodding, they're going to be rejoicing. They're going to be dancing. When they're doing the Avera, so it comes out that really Be'emet, their main goal was to be Mechalel Shabbat publicly in Eretz Israel. That's what they wanted to do. The side thing, the excuse was this general, was this big piece of machinery for the electric company. But that was their main thing. And therefore he said, Al-Matai Reshaim Ya'alozu, and to when the Reshaim are going to rejoice. And obviously it hurts. But now we're going to try to focus on this week's parasha and another event. There were two sins that we did that during the de that desert, the Dor De'a, that we, we were punished severely for it. One of them was the Chet Egel, and one of them was Chet Meragli, The sin of the golden calf and the sin of the spies. Now, there was by both of them, there was an aftermath. There was actions that actually came afterwards that changed the entire scenario. Why? After the Chet Egel, they started dancing. They were happy. In Chet Egel, Moshe Rabbeinu comes and he gets upset and he broke it. Why was he saw it? The Sforno says that he says, what happened exactly? He says, you know, if there wasn't this dancing, Moshe Rabbeinu wouldn't have destroyed the Luchot. And now comes something incredible. Chazal teaches us, what are the difference between the first 10, ten Commandments and the second one? Luchot Rishonot, and Shniot, he says, the first one, if we would have learned Torah, we would have never forgotten it. Number two, death would have stopped. Nobody would have died anymore. Number three, the Betar Dash wouldn't have been destroyed. Not only that, we wouldn't have gone to Galut, to exile, until now. So therefore, it comes out that everything would have stopped if B'nai Yisrael would have sinned, but they weren't rejoicing afterwards. Meaning they sinned. They did sin. They did the Chet Egel. But what was worse was the dances that they're going to dance afterwards. Now, the question is, why? What's going on? Why is it like that? Saying the sin is a sin. What do I care about what they do after the sin? The same thing happened with the Menaglin. 
the Menaglim, they come and they started speaking against Eretz Israel. And then what did they do? They started crying. And we know that it was Tisha B'Av. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, since you guys cry for no reason, I'm going to give you a reason to cry. So then the Tivot Shalom comes and he says, how do we understand this? So then also same thing. Just because of the crying afterwards, that's why? He already did the Avera. So he says something incredible. A piece sold of the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov says, we have what's called in Kohelet. It says, Bechol Yom Kol, right? There's a bat call. A heavenly voice that comes out. And it says, Shuru Barim Shobvim, please come and do Teshuvah. And the Baal Shem Tov comes and he asks, one second, did you ever hear the bat call? Did you hear the heavenly voice? I never heard of it. You never heard of it. He ne- so if nobody ever heard of it, so what's the purpose of the bat call? What's the purpose of this voice, little voice coming and telling you do Teshuvah? But rather the Baal Shem Tov answers, you know where it is. We always hear it. You know where we hear it? A guilty conscience. I don't know if you ever realized that all of a sudden we do a sin. In Chas Shalom, we sin, whatever it is, and all of a sudden we feel bad. We have this guilty conscience. We feel, you know what, it's like, uh, you know, I don't feel good about myself. So he says that in itself is because of the bat call, right, of Shuvu Banim Shovavim. Because of this heavenly voice of Shuvu Banim Shovavim that we have to come back to Akash Baruch so therefore, he comes and he explains like this. He says, when Bani Yisrael came and they did the, the, the Egel Zahab, what happened was they sinned. But if they would have felt the remorse right away, if they wouldn't have danced and been happy, it was a hope. It was something that they were able to do. Once they came, right? And once Moshe Rabbeinu sees what happened, he comes and all of a sudden he had to destroy the said, There's nothing what to do. Because once they're happy with doing the Avera, but they don't even feel bad about it. So what do you want them to do then? At least if a person feels bad about doing an Avera, okay. So he feels bad about doing an Avera. And that's why it's so important, right, for us to understand. What is the greatness also that you see in Moshe Rabbeinu? In Moshe Rabbeinu, the, the, the Torah, the last pasuk in the Torah says, that he went and he broke the Luchot. Well, obviously, he's not going to break the Luchot. And on this, there's actually a very interesting answer of the Shiure Da'at. And the Shiure Da'at says something which is a very big Musar. Imagine right now we come and we invest in something. Imagine we invest, whether it's all our time, our energy, our money. After the investment, we feel attached to it. Moshe Rabbeinu was invested from the beginning of Mitzrayim till afterwards to bring them out and to give them the Torah. All of a sudden he realizes it was a sour investment. Why? They did the Chet of the Egel Azav, and now they're dancing. The greatness of Moshe Rabbeinu was is that he forgets about his entire concept of being of himself, everything that he invested and everything that he did. And he says, this cannot happen. He had to destroy this, the Luchot. It's impossible. That is the greatness of Moshe Rabbeinu. Because if not, some of us would have said, you know what, at least we could save a little bit of it. We could do this. We could do that. Why? We were so invested in it. But no. They realized that they detached, he detached himself from what his negut was from, with, but being biased. And he says, right now we have to destroy it. And therefore the rabbi is coming to teach every single action that we do, there's an after action. There's an aftermath. That after action is much more important than the action in itself. Because that afterwards comes and dictates to us what it is. Whether it's for the positive or the negative. That's why we say, to remove to us the satan before the action and even after the action. Because if a person does a mitzvah, and then they regret the mitzvah, they completely come and they erase the mitzvah as if the mitzvah was not done. And the same thing when a person comes and he does an avera and he's happy about doing the avera, it's very difficult for them to do teshuvah. That, the laughing, the, the laughter, the joy, the, that enthusiasm of the avera was even worse than the avera in itself. Because the avera, it could be maybe they were forced mature, maybe there's a yitzhada, maybe there's this. There's many different reasons. But the fact that afterwards they were happy in what they did, that's much more difficult. And that's why it's so important for us just to remember this, because this in essence is what we have to learn from this week's parasha about the greatness of what it is, every single one of our actions and the after effects of every action as well.